On the 12th of December 2001, Winona Ryder was arrested outside Saks Fifth Avenue when she was caught stealing over $5,560 worth of merchandise. Security had followed her movements on cameras for about half an hour as she went from one boutique to another, twice going into a fitting room to clip sensor tags off some of her items. As soon as she walked out the Saks store, security guards ran her down, brought her back in and she allegedly said, I'm sorry for what I did. My director directed me to shoplift for a role I was preparing. Winona Ryder's shoplifting scandal rocked the nation as America witnessed one of its former child stars turned Hollywood ingenue go through a troubled period in her life as her use of heavy painkilling medication without a valid prescription also came out of the news cycle. It seemed that the girl interrupted star's life was eerily reflecting that of which she had played in the Oscar winning movie with Angelina Jolie. But Winona's shoplifting scandal isn't just an iconic pop culture moment because of the gifts and artwork we got out of the trial, but more so because of the public's reaction to how the media treated a figure they loved so deeply and the movement that started because of it. At the time of her arrest, Winona had become the cult face of the 90s, the alternative chick who didn't try to bend herself to what people and society wanted her to be, but rather just let people adjust to her. They say you were either a Winona or a Gwyneth, and a lot of people wanted to be Winona. By 2001, she had starred in such classics as Hedda's, Beetlejuice, Mermaids, Edward Scissorhands, Bram Stoker's Dracula, The Age of Innocence, Reality Bites, Little Woman, and Girl Interrupted. Safe to say, she was a much loved actress that people adored and wished the best for and most people thought she was living her best life. But throughout the years, Winona had subtly let us know that she was struggling inside and out. After she finished filming on the House of the Spirits in 1992, Winona checked herself into a hospital after feeling emotionally wrecked from the filming experience, her recent breakup with her first serious boyfriend, Johnny Depp, as well as suffering from insomnia and anxiety attacks. I thought I was losing my mind. You know when you were just so tired you can't sleep? Years later, in 1999, after filming Girl Interrupted, a film which eerily reflected her own predicament, Winona did an interview with Diane Sawyer, which she would later regret and say that it negatively affected her public image. Here is some of the things she said in the Diane interview. I was driving around and I was wishing so badly that I had someone to talk to, a friend, someone, and I didn't. And I saw this magazine stand outdoor magazine stand and I saw myself on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine and it said something like Winona Ryder the luckiest girl in the world and it broke my heart because there I was you know in so much pain and feeling so confused feeling so lost in my life um, I wasn't allowed to complain because I was so lucky you know and I was so blessed and I made a lot of money and you know my problems weren't real problems and and if I I mean I was I, I'm as nauseated as the next person when actors complain about their lives you know we are we are blessed we are lucky but the stuff that I was going through was difficult. Reflecting on that moment in 2016, Winona said, I remember I did Diane Sawyer and I talked about my experiences with anxiety and depression when I was that age. And I think by doing that, maybe coupled with my physical size, there's this crazy thing. And I realized recently it's literally impossible to try to change that story. I'm so sick of people shaming women for being sensitive or vulnerable. It's so bizarre to me. However, it wasn't just her mental health that had been lacking in the past few years. Since the early 90s, Winona had been ducking out of movies due to last minute health problems as well as experiencing injuries on multiple sets. During the filming of The Age of Innocence, she reportedly injured her ribs due to a corset and suffered an ear infection on the set of Alien Resurrection. Years later, in 2001, the year that her shoplifting scandal echoed across the world, she ducked out of the film Lily and the Secret Planting at the last minute due to severe gastroenterological problems. But the day that she touched down back in LA from the London production, she was photographed hiking near her home in Beverly Hills. So when it was reported on the Monday of December the 13th that Winona Ryder had been arrested on shoplifting charges, the media was quick to label her as a crazy person and bring up her history of speaking about her mental health. In a BBC News article that came out on the 14th of December that year, under the subtitle Misunderstanding, there is also the subtitle 
depression, where it says she has had highly publicized problems with depression and exhaustion. There were concerns for her health earlier this year when she was pictured in London looking tired and gaunt. She had previously spoken of her attempts to drown out depression and anxiety attacks with alcohol. The New York Post headline was a lot more prompt, simply saying, Winona's lame excuse, shoplifting was merely research for a flick. In a Vogue article announcing her arrest, they ended the piece with, At 20, she was briefly hospitalized, suffering from depression, anxiety attacks, and exhaustion. More recently, her career has been blighted by stomach problems, which have forced her to pull out of a number of projects. I think this paragraph from an article that appeared in the Harvard Crimson on the three-month anniversary of Winona's arrest, titled Forgiving Winona Ryder, sums up the media's reaction for best. Public sentiment following the incident has been, quite frankly, disturbingly callous. All the newspaper and magazine articles I've read on the subject have adopted tones of condescension and disgust that someone who supposedly has everything would stoop to a seemingly purposeless crime. The Crimson didn't even cover the story. I have yet to find one sensitive source that shares my opinion that Ryder deserves our sympathy. However, if the media wasn't ready to show any support for Winona, the public certainly was. And on the 25th of January, Vogue put out an article talking about the latest accessory burning up young Hollywood. The hottest accessory in LA this week is a $15 black t-shirt bearing a 70s star female face and the words Free Winona. The bizarre new craze is born out of a grassroots campaign to free Winona Ryder following her arrest in Saks Fifth Avenue last month. Winona, and this is an iconic pop culture moment in itself, even wore one of the shirts on the cover of her June 2002 W Magazine issue, in which she declines to talk about any details surrounding her court trial on the advice of her lawyer. But I think the cover says enough. The trial was eventually held throughout fall and Winona made several appearances in some great looks, including a few pieces in the brand she tried to steal a sweater from, Marc Jacobs, who would eventually cast her in his 2003 spring ad campaign, so it all worked out. One think piece that came out at the time said, she may be a shoplifter, but she has impeccable taste. We also got from the trial this gif and photo, which happened when a lawyer condemned Winona's lawyer for bringing up the fact that Winona had helped the case of the missing child Polly class in 1990. 1993 to try and show that Winona's character wasn't evil or malicious. Body of a dead child, and in some way say because she supported the no, family. That, was, that the is child. just so outrageous, Judge. I've that really is. For a year, and I'm she hasn't her. listened to anything for a year. She's only been on this case for four months. She was eventually sentenced to three years of probation, 480 hours of community service, $3,700 in fines, and $6,355 in restitution to Saks Fifth Avenue, and was ordered to attend psychological and drug counseling. After her court trial, Winona took some time off from Hollywood and didn't appear in a single movie until 2006, apart from an uncredited role in 2004. In the meantime, she partied with Kate Moss, flirted with homosexuality with Britney Murphy, at Mercedes, the couple became even more playful. Fully aware that their every move was being taped, they put on a little show for the paparazzi. Wow, not exactly a peck on the cheek. And spent some time investing in other interests. She hasn't talked a lot about her shoplifting moment since it happened in 2002. But in an interview with Porter Magazine in 2016, she finally shared her thoughts. Psychologically, I must have been at a place where I just wanted to stop. I won't get into what happened, but it wasn't what people think. And it wasn't like the crime of the century, but it allowed me time that I really needed, where I went back to San Francisco and got back into things that I just had other interests, frankly. A lot of people had the perception that I just disappeared in the 2000s, and I did, but only from that world. I appeared elsewhere, I promise you. I was transformed into doing stuff I really wanted to do. It was a great awakening. It just wasn't in the public eye. I love Winona Ryder so much, and this moment, even though it was a low place for her, just because of the free Winona movement and the looks and the pictures and the artwork, I think it is truly iconic. Do you think that the scandal really affected her career, or do you think she was just ready to leave Hollywood anyway? Let me know in the comments down below, like the video, and subscribe if you're new. You look like hell. Yeah, I just got back. When you